Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Young, and I'm doing a series of uh, instructional videos basically focusing on interoperability. And the reason why I've done it in doing this is because there's a lot of confusions around when people are working with the different applications with within IBM Business Analytics. And since there's a big push to kind of move more and more information together, whether it means pulling budgeting information from TM1 into Cognos Disclosure Management, or pulling consolidated information into Cognos Disclosure Management, or publishing consolidated information into uh, TM1 by the financial analytical publisher, there's a big push to kind of get our products to work better together. Now, this session is basically going to pick up a little bit where the user guides kind of drop off and where there's some confusion around kind of some of the approaches to do when you're defining or working with TM1, for example, in Cognos Disclosure Management. So I'm going to emphasize different things to watch out for as pitfalls as you're doing different things. So I'll be emphasizing this throughout the sessions. The slide deck's about eight or nine slides and I'll walk you through different things as we do. Now to set the kind of the groundwork what I want to kind of do is a couple things here. One of the things that we're trying to emphasize with customers and partners is that if you're using kind of TM1 to, to push data into Cognos Disclosure Management then it's basically you're really emphasizing the planning cycle. So that's whether that's doing reforecasting or the actual planning cycle that you've completed your annual plans. Okay, and then pushing that data back into CDM as part of the, the close consolidation reporting where you're comparing your actual versus planned results. Okay, Because TM1 is really a very powerful tool for budgeting and planning cycles. It's that way we kind of want to emphasize to do the more of the planning cycle inside TM1 and then pushing that information back into Cognos Disclosure Management. Okay, Now, there is the, the other capability too as well if we want to take a step back there is the capability to do right back between TM1 and CDM so you actually can build or do certain formulas or certain calculations whether it's headcount whether it's key performance indicators and you can push that back to a, a dedicated TM1 cube on a TM1 server to basically to do a certain amount of right back well, now bear in mind we're trying to if we're discussing recommended practices we're recommending that you can probably be careful what you're trying to do right back in because you don't want to supersede basically the functionality of TM1 or Cognos Controller or other products by trying to do something right back that's more suited for those applications so as you're thinking this through when you're sitting with your partners or your customer your own data the best thing to do is take a map and take a holistic view of that data and find out how best you want to use the tools to actually pull that data together so the next slide is I'm not going to make this into a TM1 uh, course um, my understanding doing these instructional videos especially emphasizing TM1 is just to talk to you about what you should be watching for as you're starting to do this data setup between TM1 and CDM. Now this particular slide what I've focused on is a TM1 server called Future Chips Plan underscore CDM. So this is the server we're going to map to. Now part of that is you need to be familiar with some of the basics of TM1 cube and you need to be basic on the applications and the cubes because we're going to be working between the applications and the cubes to basically define the data source right so we want to look at what application we're mapping to and what cube we are so we want to know the dimension structure because the data sets very very important as you're mapping in because the old philosophy garbage in garbage out so what you want to emphasize here is basically emphasize knowing your data and the reason I use this slide here is just to give you a, a rough side of looking at TM1 because one of the things you want to do when you're piecing things together if you're troubleshooting you may have to go back to TM1 to look at different things one look, do I have the right view of that data do I have the right cube of that data do I have the right security acts to that data okay so you want to make sure you're mapping everything properly so that when that data is pushed through into CDM it's correctly mapped properly okay Next slide now. This is straightly from the user guide. I'm not telling you anything different than what's in the user guide, but I'm going to clarify a couple things here with this particular slide as you're building your connection here. So you're going to give it a name like you normally do, a possible description if you prefer. Now you're going to set an expiration policy, and this is where you need to have some familiarity with CDM. This is talking about the refresh. How often do you want the data to refresh? And then the next pieces we're getting into the server. So that server maps back to what we showed you in the previous view, which is financial chips plan underscore CDM. 
then we're looking at authentication type now you have options here we have basic authentication or we have Cognos Access Manager which means you need to have your namespace defined right and that's why in this particular slide you're seeing the namespace grayed out because we're not using a Cognos Access administration management system to basically manage uh, single sign-on security so we're looking at more lo localized security to kind of coincide now here's the critical aspect again as I said earlier when you work in the TM1 you want to make sure that your security access level to that data is the same level in TM1 so you want to make sure that your host and your administrator here I should say not your host but your administrator here basically user ID has the right level of access because if he doesn't when we go in the next screens and look at look look at that mapping that data you're not going to pull in the right data now you also see here the application that we talked about in the cube now now we're getting specifically where we're going inside the, the TM1 server and what we want to pull in now you can test your connection if you get a green check mark good things you've connected to the TM1 server to the application in the cube have we done anything at this point no we haven't we haven't mapped the data set yet we haven't done anything now to map that data out the next screens will basically talk about mapping that data now that's where you basically need to look at understanding the TM1 cube so you need to understand how is it structured okay what am I trying to pull in what is the information I want as part of my closed consolidation reporting so you need to map that out as part of this whole define your data data sets and your data sources right so in this particular case you're seeing here financial version you're seeing a time dimension you're seeing currency dimension you're seeing financial statement accounts so that's a, your general ledger accounts calculation type geography so am I looking at a specific geography area or am I looking at consolidation am I looking at product line distribution or am I looking at overall product so you're looking at your filters here so the reason why that's important because you need to understand what level of data you want to bring into CDM as part of defining it so part of the reason I showed this slide here is so that when you're working with TM1 you kind of have the TM1 application open and you're looking at that cube and you're also may even you look at it in cube viewer to get an idea what the parameters are and what the values are and the reason why I'm emphasizing that because it's a good way to backtrack if you've got a problem with a setup if you're not seeing what you want to see you need to go back and check the cube and see what you've got a view on it or see what you've got in your filters because if your filters are off they're going to produce the on off ball results and that's not what you're looking for here so that's why I want to emphasize here to make you aware of that the next slide now says that basically what we've done here is we've defined the times and the versions so you see the periods and stuff in the columns and then you're seeing on the, the uh, the left hand side of the panel you're seeing the financial statement accounts so this particular case we're looking at a financial statement so it's a, a budgeted income statement why is that important well because you probably want to bring in your actual forecasted number as part of your financial close cycle and because of that you want to ensure that it's done correctly now that being said you can see we got numbers here this is where you want to kind of take a step back and then compare that to the TM1 instant or the server that you're connecting to to make sure they validate. The next slide will actually walk you through the basically a validation process. So if we go in the next slide here, you're seeing two slides here overlap. You're seeing QViewer open with a bunch of different filters. Okay, and I've, the filters can be the parameters, right? So I've decided it's a plan. I decide it's global consolidation, so it's the top level. I decide it's for all geographic areas, and I decide it's for all products. So I'm doing a consolidated financial statement. You could easily have said, I'm only going to look at one company, or maybe I'm looking at segmental reporting of products or something. That's what you have to kind of decide of what you're trying to bring in in terms of that view of that data, because that's the data view that you're going to be reporting or matching against as you build your CDM objects within CDM. The second slide down you're seeing below is the actual query results. And I want you to focus on one line here, net income before taxes. You're seeing an after taxes, I mean. You're seeing a number of 13,382,908 showing up above in the queue viewer. You compare it to your data source query results, and guess what? It's equal. So you can kind of look at this and say, okay, my results are good. Now I'm basically able to do the next step, which is then associate this information to the appropriate report. If there's a planning report, you may want to have it as part of the financial statement 
closed cycle where you're doing your variance reporting. So again, you're mapping it out. We're now getting into the point now where we're passing it off to the CDM functionality because now we believe the numbers are correct. And now what's going to happen is when you open up a report, guess what it's going to do? It's going to create a data source sheet. And that data source sheet's going to look exactly the way it was dumped in your query view. Okay, results. You can also again compare this to your TM1 cube to make sure it looks right. Okay, all we've done right now is we've put the data source within a sheet within a CDM object. We haven't took advantage of functionality as a CDM. The reason why we haven't done that is because it's not required yet. We just basically have defined it here. Now, once you've got the data source there and you're happy that it's working right, you can basically then go on the last slide and build your CDM report. Now, you're just linking to that sheet and doing it in the format and using the full functionality of CDM to build that report. So, the key aspects here that you need to understand when you're looking at this is a couple pieces. One is understand the flow. Understand you need to be looking at TM1 on the security side and to make sure the results are there as part of the connection to TM1. Two, is my connection to the server working properly? Three, have I defined the data sets properly, right? And do I have a mechanism to make sure I'm validating things, right? So that's the reason why I want to emphasize this because a lot of cases people are opening up these data sources and not necessarily taking a step back of what they're trying to do with TM1, okay? TM1 is a very powerful tool, but you need to have to know how you want to use it with your close consolidation reporting cycle. Now this kind of wraps up kind of an instructional video walking you through some slides. The intent is to kind of provide you an overview where the connections work, where the problems can follow, so that if you're troubleshooting anything or looking at things or thinking it through of how you want to do things, this kind of gives you some planning information to kind of help you troubleshoot and plan different things out. This concludes this video. Thank you so much.